Gentlemen, on July 2nd, Bill Clinton arranged to meet Attorney General Loretta Lynch as their planes were parked next to each other at LA Airport. Three days later, Jim Comey, head of the FBI, itemized in exacting detail all the top secret email communications that Hillary Clinton sent with extreme carelessness. He revealed the evidence necessary to convict her of violating laws requiring better stewardship of our nation's secrets. Director Comey then stated, despite the evidence, no recommendation for indictment will be made. Why? Why? Our last speaker this evening will give his answer. He will speak, Mr. Timer, for 19 to 21 minutes. The title of his speech is The Golden Rule. Please welcome Eric Weiss, The Golden Rule. Eric Weiss. So Bill Clinton was asked about this conversation with Attorney General Loretta Lynch. And he came out and categorically said, I did not have an inappropriate conversation with that woman. Oh, a couple days later, a comment came out that I was looking at on Facebook. And I admit it, I'm a Facebook addict. I'm spending way too much time on Facebook. I need to get some sleep so I can come to these types of meetings and and not have to use caffeine to stay awake. <laughs> not that you guys are boring, but I have not been getting enough sleep. <laughs> yeah. So they asked him, they, they said, okay, so what was it that you were talking about? And he said, well, we were talking about family. So you can, so this neat little, little Facebook ad came out, a little picture, and it had Bill Clinton there. And he was standing up like this, and he had his hand out with his ring. And, and Loretta was, kneeling down and kissing the ring. And Clinton said, now remember Loretta, if you ever want to see your family again, <laughs> Yeah, it's good that we can laugh and joke about this, but it's really something that I've been quite upset about and it's taken me at least 24 hours to find something funny to say about it. But let's go to some of the facts. Let's actually talk about what Jim Comey did come out and say in his news conference, an unprecedented news conference. The FBI normally does not tell exactly what they found out to the public, but because of what Bill Clinton had done, there was a real risk of transparency. There was a real risk that people didn't want, uh, didn't understand what was going on, and he needed to clarify. So he did, he came out and said, here are some of the things that I will let you know. And I'm going to reveal what he had to say by juxtapositioning it next to some of the things that Hillary Rodham Clinton had said. So on, here's Clinton. I did not email any classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. That was in a news conference on March 2015. Now here's the facts according to Jim Comey. Actually, the FBI identified at least 113 emails that passed through Clinton's server and contained materials that were classified at the time they were sent including some that were top secret and referred to highly classified special access programs. As Jim Comey said, any reasonable person in Secretary Clinton's position or in a position of those with whom she was corresponding about the matters should have known that an unclassified system was no place for that conversation. Clinton and her aides were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. It's interesting because one of the people that I've commented with on Facebook said, what does the word extremely careless mean? Isn't that pretty close to like negligent? And isn't negligent essentially what we're trying to show in order for her to be in violation of the statutes that would require her to lose her job? I don't know if you guys remember, but there are some spies in our country who have run off to Russia for deliberately leaking lots of information. Chelsea Manning is one of them. We also have, uh, let's see, we have Edwin Snowden, who's currently over in Russia right now. They leaked lots of information and had to leave the country. But there's other people who have lost their jobs for just being negligent. One of them was Petraeus. Petraeus managed to want to be famous and give some information to his mistress who was doing a biography. It got out. 
that he had done that and he lost his job. Not because of spy, not because Russia found out about it, but just because he had done that one thing of being negligent or extremely careless in using that information. Scooter Libby. Scooter Libby also got lost his job because he had one conversation where he mentioned a former CIA agent by name. And that was it. Enough to cost him his job. Let's look at some of the other things that we found out. Clinton said, I never received nor sent any material that was marked classified. She said this in an NBC interview July 2016. What are the facts? Clinton has separately clung to her rationale that there was no classification marking on her emails that would have warned her and others not to transmit the sensitive material. But the private system did in fact handle emails that bore markings indicating they contained classified information. According to Comey, it's actually stamped on it, top secret, classified. And yet she goes in front of an NBC interview July 2006 and swears that that didn't happen. Okay? Let's go to the next point, Clinton. I responded right away and provided all my emails that could possibly be work-related to the State Department. This was in a news conference in March 2015. The facts? Not so, says the FBI. Comey said that when his forensic team examined Clinton's server, it found there were several thousand work-related emails that were not in the group of 30,000 that had been returned by Clinton to the State Department. There was a total of about 60,000 emails, and she had her own attorneys go and accidentally on purpose wipe out about 30,000 of them. Why did that happen? If You guys have heard me before talk about Clinton Cash. Clinton Cash is an entire book that talks about all the different nefarious activities that Clinton has undertaken and been able to successfully hide the evidence. Where are the smoking guns for all the things that she's done? In those 30,000 deleted emails, the ones that were not work-related. Now let me ask you a question. She sends 60,000 emails. 30,000 have to do with her job that she's being paid for as Secretary of State. 30,000, the same amount, have to do with her Clinton Foundation activities. Isn't this proof that she's spending taxpayer money enriching the Clinton Foundation while she's supposed to be working for the government? None of us get paid for full-time work for working half-time. But the actual smoking gun is accidentally on purpose deleted and gone, and we don't know if we're going to get those. So what does that mean? I thought the FBI was going to do the same thing that they did with Al Capone. They didn't get Al Capone for taking a baseball bat and beating up people. They couldn't find anyone who was willing to testify against that for fear of their own families being wiped out. So they got him on tax evasion. They found a ledger that actually documented all the illegal bootlegging that he had done, and based on that, they were able to throw him in jail. And I thought this is what they were doing to Clinton. They were finding a technicality of illegally dealing with, or, or being careless or negligent with these secrets, and they were going to use that to prevent her from becoming president. But in fact, the exact opposite has happened. Let's see, there might be one other thing I'd like to read to you. Oh, yes, okay. Clinton, I opted for convenience to use my personal email account, which was allowed by the State Department. She said this in a news conference in March 2015. But in fact, the FBI found that a May 2016 audit by the State Department Inspector General found there was no evidence Clinton sought or received approval to operate a private server and that she had an obligation to discuss using her personal email account to conduct official business with their offices. She lied. Now, is it a crime to lie to the American public? No, people do it all the time. Politicians do it all the time. She must not have repeated these same lies to the FBI because lying to the FBI is obstruction of justice and a separate crime. So she had the smarts to lie to us and tell the FBI the truth. And that's why she wasn't convicted of yet another crime. But where, do I, where am I going with this? We have a problem in this country, and I've been discussing it on Facebook, and that a lot of people will rationalize what she has done. Mostly Democrats. Democrats are circling around her and guarding her and protecting her as one of their own. And they don't want to acknowledge that there's been any falsehood on her part, that there's been any breaking of the law. They will guard her with their lives. And where have we seen this before? We saw something similar to this in the O.J. Simpson trial. 
In the O.J. Simpson trial, everyone in this room thought it was about murder. Is O.J. guilty of murder? Did he, gloves or not, carry the knife that did the deed? But the defense attorneys for O.J. didn't make it about murder. They made it about the big white oppressor who wanted to keep that uppity black where he belonged. And it was the racist police department who manufactured this case. And we were all upset as white people because Simpson had a mansion. And Simpson wasn't speaking in Ebonics. And, and Simpson actually was making a great life as an actor. And we couldn't handle the fact that these uppity blacks were entering into our neighborhood. So we framed him. And they convinced enough people on the <coughs> jury to go along with that lie so that he did not get convicted. Us poor saps thought it was about a murder trial. We didn't realize it was about racism. So is that the only case where, where the people have been able to do that sort of a twist? Let's look at something a little bit closer to what's actually happening in this case. What did Bill Clinton do when he was in office? He sexually harassed, perhaps raped Juanita Broderick, and was brought up under charges. And under those charges, in a court of law, he said it didn't happen. And that he also had never had sex with Monica Lewinsky, because they tried to show that it was in his character to try and pressure people for sex. So they talked about all the, all the allegations, and all the people. And he categorically denied it under oath. And then, Kenneth Starr was being paid $17 million to overcome all of the obstructions that were being thrown his way, found the semen-stained semen dress that Monica Lewinsky had kept. Because Monica was smart enough to know that she was being pulled apart by Hillary, having her reputation destroyed, and being moved off the scene, and it would have continued to happen, except she had evidence to prove her side of the story. And she wasn't going to go to jail for Bill. She was willing to do just about anything else, but she was not willing to go to jail for Bill. So they found that out. And then what did Bill Clinton do? Bill Clinton said, this isn't about perjury. This isn't about obstruction of justice. This is just about adultery. And everyone does it. And he went on a big crying tour all across America. He carried his Bible with him and said, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't believe it. I can't believe I got caught. I mean, I can't believe I did this to my wife. I can't believe it. And he got off. He got it off because he made it into politics, a totally different thing from obstruction of justice, totally different thing than perjury. He just made it as, anyone who's more pure than me, feel free to throw the first stone. Don't you guys, aren't you Christians, aren't you willing to forgive? And all of a sudden, he couldn't be convicted in the Senate anymore because the rule of law no longer mattered. It was all about politics. Mr. Comey stood up. Three times he said, this is not about politics. I've been in sales long enough to know that Shakespeare is right when he says, methinks thou dost grotesque too much. <coughs> when someone says it's not about politics three times, it's about politics. I don't believe it's because Bill Clinton called him and offered him this yacht for the weekend. I don't think that it's blowback because the Republicans wanted Hillary's head, but I do think that Jim Comey is smart enough to know he would not get a conviction. If he had, had to go out into this society and pick a jury of 10 people with five Republicans who believe in the rule of law and five Democrats with two of them believing in the rule of law, there are still three of them who are going to circle the wagons and say Hillary is innocent because the Democrats want the outcome they want. And they don't care how they get there. Now, how can I say that? Let me give you some more examples. They're all over the place. In 2006, Congress passed a law that said, build the fence. Build the fence. We control the Congress. Build the fence, Mr. Obama. Here's all your money, $40, $40 billion. Obama has spent $10 trillion in deficit spending during the time he's in office. The cost of 50 fences, and the fence has not been built, regardless of the law that said it needed to be built. That's just one aspect of not enforcing our immigration laws. There's also sanctuary cities all over America who are supposed to refer violent criminals to the federal government when they commit crimes so that they can be deported if they're not 
legal aliens. Those sanctuary cities are either making the reportation or, or reporting correctly, and they're not being followed up on, or they're not making the reports, and Obama doesn't care, because he doesn't like that law. So he's not going to enforce that law. What about pot? There's pictures of Obama smoking pot. You can find them on the internet. He doesn't like that law. He's not enforcing it. It's a category one federal offense across America. If he enforced the law, we wouldn't have pot shops all over El Cajon. We wouldn't have them in Santee. We wouldn't have these shops selling to kids like they said they were not going to, but which now they are. They said when they went in, it was only for medical reasons. That's the Trojan horse to get them in. Now they're trying to push in November to expand it to any adult can go ahead and get it. If you look at the Colorado, 39% of the kids who want to get pot can find it easily, according to, to them, and they legalize pot. If you don't like the pot laws, change the laws. If you don't like it, get 51%, change the law. But this, we're not going to enforce the laws that we don't like stuff, is anarchy. It's anarchy. If you don't like the law, change it. And not just on the state level, you have to recognize that the federal government trumps the state law. What's another example? Another example is the Defense of Marriage Act. The Defense of Marriage Act said a marriage is between a man and a woman. It was passed during President Clinton's time in office. President Clinton signed it. He didn't veto it. He signed it. He took all the credit for signing it. He said this is a great law at the time that he signed it. A marriage should only be, be between a man and a woman. 10, 15 years later, Obama doesn't like that law. It goes before the Supreme Court. It's his duty to defend the laws of our country, whether he likes them or not. He doesn't send any attorneys, none. The only people who show up are private citizens who try and make the case for the government, without all the government's resources, without the government's hundreds of attorneys that could have been working on the case. And then, of course, they lose. Time after time after time, we see that Obama does not support, or the laws he doesn't support, he won't enforce. So why, why would the FBI say, OK, Having paid attention over the last eight years and seeing that the fox is in charge of the hen house, why would we then refer to the fox yet another crime that Hillary Clinton has done and expect them to follow up on it? Perfect example is how attorney Loretta Lynch, whether she had an inappropriate conversation or not, is busy talking and hobnobbing with a potentially future boss. Hillary Clinton, if she's elected to president, has already come out after the fact and said she's going to keep Loretta Lynch. She likes her as attorney general. She's actually said that on the campaign trail. I mean, in any other country, that would be evidence of bribery. <laughs> they could convict her on that. I'm going to have a chance between now and November to talk about everything that's in Clinton cash and talk about every, well, not every single one. There's so many of them. But try and talk about the big ones that are easy to understand. Because this is not an isolated incident. This is trying to get Al Capone for tax evasion while he's busy bashing in people's heads with a baseball bat and killing cops that are trying to enforce prohibition. And you may not like prohibition, but then change the law. That's what we did back then. We changed the law because we didn't like it. That doesn't mean you let off the people who are dis that are legally, or excuse me, that are breaking the law, that are doing illegal stuff. That's not the way it's supposed to work. One of the other things that I've talked about on Facebook is I've pointed out that I'm a little bit unhappy, if you haven't gotten it already, with uh, Hillary Clinton. And another thing that people say is, well, George W. Bush did the same thing. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Well, George W. Bush got $330 million donated to his library, so he must have been trading favors also. And it's like, well, hold on, hold on here. If he is doing that, then he should be disqualified for being president ever again, just like Hillary. Two wrongs don't make a right. Now, there's no proof that he's actually trading favors for money after the, fa after the fact, but it does warrant some investigation. Has there been any investigation of Hillary for making $150 million 
to her Clinton Foundation while she's being paid to be Secretary of State and spending half of her time writing emails to get $150 million? Doesn't make sense to me. Has there been any investigation of that? I thought that's what the FBI was investigating. Evidently not. So where are we with this? I said two wrongs don't make a right. And obviously when I'm referring to two wrongs, I'm referring to both Clintons. Mr. Toastmaster.